Hi everybody, welcome to today's Facebook Live. I'm Dr. Sally Foote, head of Foot and Friends, on my website devoted to animal behavior and helping veterinarians, veterinary staff, and pet owners and other professionals understand pet behavior. Today we're going to start talk about perch problems. Now I've done a couple of Facebook Lives recently helping to um, understand the steps of introducing, reintroducing cats or bringing a new cat in the home. You know, how we feed through the door and then the next step is to use a baby gate but have the cats away from the gate, maybe one up on a table while seeing the other cat on the floor so they get accustomed to one high and one low because we need that distance and we need to keep help the cat see like how to maneuver around the house without competing on the floor. So in preparing the home, it's very important to provide enough perches for our cats. And what I see oftentimes are wonderful and beautiful cat trees, you know, really big, tall cat trees with lots of shelves on them, but it's one tree. And while yes, that tree has maybe four or five shelves and like a little, you know, cubby for the cat to hide in, what usually happens is those one cat is getting like to the top, you know, to the top shelf. And I'm just using this here. I don't have a big cat tree in my learning center here to use as a model. So let's just pretend like this is the top shelf, you know, of that cat tree. And so we have one of the cats who, you know, has hopped up on through the cat tree and gets up on that top shelf. And he's having a good time looking out the window, or maybe it's just away from the window, not in front of the window, but still close enough where he's looking out the window and he likes his spot and he likes his perch. Well, what happens is then we get the second cat and that second cat comes up on this cat tree and he's like looking at this cat, I want that perch. I want the high perch. I want to see out the window also because these other shelves are not oriented for me to be able to sit, really see out the window as well and be at what I feel like is a high spot. Then, so this cat will come up and will come up and start to bat and paw at the cat on the top shelf. And oftentimes our pet owners or cat owners may think, oh, well, they're playing, they're having a good time. Actually, they're not. This kitty is batting at this one to get him to get up and to move. Now what you may see is you might see this cat hop off the cat tree and then this cat gets on the cat tree, right? Gets up on the shelf. There was no hissing, there wasn't any growling, there wasn't any fight, yet that was competition for this one perch. And it can be a foundation that can build up that later on we'll be fighting or when we're reintroducing the cats, if we have not provided more of these perches that are high up and separated in space, apart from each other, you know, staggered, when you reintroduce them, they're gonna go back to fighting at the top of the cat tree. So um, the first things I wanna talk about are, when we look at these cat trees, we want to understand how cats prefer to perch around each other. Now yes, some cats like to be high, some cats like to be low, some cats wanna be in like a little cubby, like even say something like sitting inside of something like this instead of out on the top shelf. And where you're gonna, how to know that about your cat is look at, well, where does my cat like to go now? I mean, is he the kind of cat who likes to climb into the cabinet? Is he the cat who likes to be on top of the bookcase or on top of the kitchen cabinets if you have, you know, that space above your cabinets? Like, where is my cat seeking to go? Where does he like to lay and hang out? Because that's gonna tell you his preferred height and whether he wants it totally enclosed or just like a little partially enclosed or more on the shelf. So if we have two cats who like to get up high or, uh, or that, we need to, if we're gonna buy a cat tree, you need to have a cat tree that has, those, has at least two or three top shelves that are at least four to five feet apart from each other. Now this is a huge cat tree. Personally, I think it's better to get two say skinny or small trees with just one platform two of them but they are staggered now apart from each other five feet apart from each other so the cats have the room to be able to go up and down and maneuver around these cat trees um the second thing is you know you may just be creative with the existing furniture you have in your home right now 
that actually may resolve a lot of these perching places and are they staggered enough and you know high enough for the cats that may solve the problem in your home without necessarily having to buy these larger pieces of cat tree type furniture that might take up space in the home and make it harder to try to open up other space in your home. So um, I just want to point out some easy ways in your home to have existing furniture, let's say something like a small bookshelf or you know storage tower like this, um, a tabletop or desktop. A lot of cats like to lay on a chair, but this can be another place to compete. They both want the seat of the chair um, and, and to help our cats, you know, maneuver and get along well with each other. So first of all, recognizing what competition looks like. And competition is going to be, you know, this cat climbing up and batting at that one. That's competition. They're, they're fighting for the same spot. Even though it doesn't look that way, that is what's happening because he's swatting at him and he's irritating him. The second one can be, another way of competition will show up is this kitty could be sitting here body blocking the route for this one to get off and he's staring okay so he's putting up a challenge and the stare in the cat is more subtle as compared to the stare in the dog it may look like well he's just sitting there looking at him well actually he may he may be staring at him and now he's creating a competition for space and the ability for this one to try to get off or not and this one may be stuck you know where's he gonna jump he's not gonna jump all the way off of this that's too high so if this whoopsie if this this cat may be staring at him to try to challenge him to get off the shelf but we are creating now on this desktop this region here a, a potential aggression zone let's call it that a potential fight zone because he can't if he jumps down here, he may pounce on him possibly because maybe it's competition over the desktop and that's really pretty close and it would be dangerous for him to get off here. Um, so what do we do, all right? And uh, so the first thing is cats do not like shelving or surfaces that they are literally laying on the same surface for. And then secondly, we need to provide enough distance between say if there were two bookcases you know we'd have one here and one at least four or five feet away that the cats feel distance enough that even if they it's hard for you to like stagger the height that they do not feel as if they're on the same place look at where the landing zones are or like the get up zones and the landing zones get up zones are the cats on the floor how is that cat going to go from the floor to the top of this it's going to have to go from the floor to maybe the seat on this chair to the desk or table and then up to here. And if this cat likes laying on this tabletop that is right next to the bookcase, this cat is going to, there's gonna be competition for the tabletop from this cat. But this one jumps up here and goes up here. So how do we, how do we range say this little vignette, <laughs> this little space because this has a potential of creating a perching area on the seat of the chair, a perching area on the top of the table, a perching area on top of the bookcase, and you know, depending, like this one's kind of open-sided, if we rotated it, we could even create like a cubby area for one of the cats to go in one of those little cubbies. It's a little awkward maybe for you if you're working at the table, but okay, you can access, this is open-sided both ways. Okay, so the first thing is to think of uh, the chairs. A lot of times these chair seats, you know, that's how we have them. We have them pushed underneath our desk and that's creating this nice little enclosed space. The cat who likes to lay here is saying, I want someplace that's nice and enclosed. I like to have a kind of a womb around me. I want a box around me. So for that cat, we will actually work with training that cat putting maybe a tablespoon of his food in the small lower cubby and have him go over there. If he really loves this dining room table chair, okay, fine. Uh, you can lay in that dining room table chair, but we now have to think like, how are the other cats gonna then get up to this bookcase? So we may put like another low stool that's over here, 
or uh, maybe a, you know, because that stool is going to have to be about tabletop height. Or we move the chair to the other side. Let me take this. If I move the chair over here to this side of the table, okay, sorry, I moved it to the other side of the table. Now a, a younger, agile cat could go from the floor up to here, would not be so close to that chair seat, so it decreases the competition from the cat who likes to sit on the chair seat, and then go from here up to the top of the bookcase. All right, so you guys see that? Just moving that one chair around the corner increases the space and takes it to a different angle. So that cat under that chair may not we really be staring down at this one so much as he's gonna try to get up on the table and get up here. All right, second things, if we have you know an open tabletop, maybe you this is where you're doing your work now, your desktop, uh, or a dining room table, a credenza, whatever. Uh, sometimes we have two cats who like to lay on the desk, right? You're working there, you have two cats get up there, and now they're <laughs> meowing at each other, or they are um, you know, maybe staring at each other, and one jumps up, the other one jumps down, one jumps on your lap while the other one's sitting on the tabletop, uh, the desktop, and they're hissing at each other. And it's because if you were sitting at this desktop, this is a card table, so it's three feet square. Most of our desks, most of our dining room tables are about 24 to 30 inches wide at the most. So when you put a cat's body on there, now we've shrunk it down to about two feet from the cat's body to the edge here, which is where your body is. So it's only two feet apart. Remember, we want three to four feet apart for these cats. We want there to be a little more space. If we can't get that space, then we want to get them a little more off of the surface that they're guarding or they're, they're, they're competing for. So if we had, let's just move my chair back again. So let's pretend, let's see this, I'm sitting well, I don't want to put my back to you. So let's pretend the chair is here. And I'm sitting there doing, I'm sitting there. And we have two cats. It's off here too, sorry. We have, we have one cat up on the desk and the other cat comes up on the desk. So you can see here how we now have a competition site, right? They're both on the same level. And my, I'm occupying the space here. Or even if this cat jumped up and sat in my lap here, Okay, and we have kitty here. We only have two feet, and this cat can be, you know, staring at that one on my lap, competing for, I don't want you on the desk, or maybe even I don't want you on my lap. So how do we decrease the competition over the desktop, because that's one area of the big desktop? One of the easiest things, frankly, to do that can help a lot is, we provide a spot for the cat to go onto or into on the desktop and so this is just a basic cat carrier base uh, a box can work but putting this we can go I'm putting it underside because what I want is I I want this to elevate this cat up here even on one desktop we can have teach this cat to go up here put some rewards there put a fleece blanket on there and maybe even oriented so it's facing, like, say, this way. So it, that extra six inches means a lot to cats, you know, having that extra bit of space here. And because he's even a little higher up, being that little higher up, we're using the cubic footage in this space. That increases a little bit more the distance from this cat to this cat. And getting his body off of the actual desktop and onto here kind of transfers the, this is the perching spot. I have it. That cat may like sitting on my lap or like sitting on the uh, seat of the chair. And now the two cats can co-perch with more peace and harmony because each one has, they have a little more space. It's more identified, that is for you, this is for me, and it fits what the cats want and need. Now to teach these cats to go to these places, Get rid of your food bowls. Honestly, cats should no longer eat out of a food bowl at all. We should be feeding all of our cats 
by hiding small little piles. When we say small little piles, we're talking about one tablespoon of dry calf food uh, hidden in various places in the house. What I mean is about three or four tablespoons of dry food per cat. But you see, this is the number of places we want our cats to perch. We wanna train them to go up there. So if these were my two pet cats, and I'm now like encouraging them how to use these different places to lay in perch according to their needs. I am in and especially in a reintroduction plan, I am going to spoon out a tablespoon of food up here for the cat who likes to jump up and get high because when he lands there, he's going to discover his food. It rewards him for going up there. I'm going to put another tablespoon of food in the cubby into here for the cat who likes to go in the cubby and I'm going to uh, toss one or two or you know to attract the cat in there so he goes into the cubby and he learns to like the cubby we'll put a tablespoon of cat food on top of this perch on top of the desktop so that cat learns to like going on top of the desktop now for the chairs chairs really they become a very big competition area for these cats and I think it is because how the chair goes under the dining room table or underneath the desk creating that cubby, obviously there's a cushion on it to keep it comfortable for us to sit on. And then there's that whole, I don't know, that whole almost room, you know, underneath the desk, underneath the dining room table, that then one of the other cats can be staring, you know, positioning themselves to stare, et cetera, at the one on the chair. So dining room table chairs, desk chairs, they do become a big competition source. Rather than putting food on the chair, what I like to do is, for my cat who likes to come up on the chair, I like to toss the food onto the chair as I'm tossing the food to the other cat to go up onto the desktop. So this way it becomes a training for the cat who is on the, when the cat who wants to compete for the chair here sees the cat who really needs and likes the chair because that's their height and they really need that cubby. Now we'll be anticipating, well, I've got something better for me on top of the, on top of the table, on top of maybe this perch that could be nearby, like next to the desk to get him off the desk. So rather than him staring at this little one, he's jumping up on the desk and jumping up high because he's getting trained to go there and his needs for being more up high and out are fulfilled because we've provided these spots for them. Uh, so look at your home before you release the cats out for the big intro and when you're still working with your cats, you know, this one's like loose in the house while the other one's in the bedroom. We're not doing the gate time yet. We get rid of the food bowls. We place these tablespoons of food to teach, say, this one to go to his perches we've provided for him. And then when the other cat now has his time in the home, well, the Heidi cat is uh, in the bedroom, we're going to do the same but teaching that cat to go up high, tabletop and that. My rule of thumb that I've just found from experience for cats to really be happy and harmonious in the home is a minimum of three perches per cat in the home with at least one place that provides kind of some kind of an enclosed area to the amount that cat likes to be enclosed. These three perches cannot be face to face with each other with another cat and that that cat tree with four shelves to get to the top is only one perch for the cat who likes to get to the top. It's not four perches. And so at least four feet apart, three per cat, one kind of covered over, no more food bowls, and place the food around in tablespoonful amounts on these perches to teach the cats to go up there and reward them for getting there. Uh, of course, products like Feel Away can be used to be sprayed on these perches to help the cats feel like they've been there before and for the marking. These tips will help to decrease a lot of that brewing competition that later leads to cat fights and introduction problems. Thank you very much. I really appreciate your time. Uh, this Friday, if I'm walking the right way, here we go. I will be presenting online through a uh, program called Profs and Pints. It's a website where they have uh, online webinars and presentations. It's gonna be about an hour and a half. So I'm gonna present for about an hour on pet pandemic problems. I'm gonna talk about with this whole year, almost a year so far, we've had of this shut-in, stay-at-home, what we're seeing 
in our dogs and our cats as behavior problems and how to help them, how to reduce those problems now if you're starting to experience those. Um, please uh, make sure that you sign up for my Facebook page. Uh, I also am uploading these Facebook Lives on my YouTube channel, drsallyjfoot.com, so please subscribe to that channel so you get these notifications if you miss the Facebook Live, and you also can share it maybe more easily from the YouTube channel. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, always remember there's a better bond through better behavior, and I appreciate your time. Bye-bye.